Hi everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel. In this video series, I will be talking about measurement system analysis. This video series include four parts. The first part is about stability of measurement system. The second and third parts are about bias and linearity in measurement systems. And the last part is gauge r and r Let's get started with the stability in measurement system. Determining the capability of measurement system is an important aspect of many quality and process improvement activities. Generally, in any activity involving measurement, some of the observed variability will be inherent in the items that are being measured, and some of the variability will result from the measurement system that is used. So, one variation coming from part and the other one is coming from measurement system itself. Measurement systems are extremely important in continuous process improvement. We need to measure something to know where we are. We use measurements to tell us if there is a problem in the process or if a process change that we implemented has improved the process. For measurements to be effective, they must be timely, accurate and precise. So the question is, how do we provide measurements that are meaningful? This question will be answered in this video series. We begin with the focus on stability of the measurement system. We trust on measurements to tell us when our process is operating correctly, when there is a problem, or when we have made an improvement. When we take a measurement, we often assume that the measurement result is the true value of our sample. Unfortunately, this is not true. Measurement systems, like any other process, are subject to variation. These are all sorts of variations in measurement systems that we will discuss in details in these video series. So, you will not always get the same result when you run a sample again or take another temperature or pH measurement again. Suppose you are a quality engineer and your role is to monitor the manufacturing of six grams molded parts. Each molded part is weighted on a scale. This scale is a measurement system. It has variation just like the process that is producing the molded part. What happens if the scale is not stable? Suppose the scale suddenly begins giving a result that is a 1 mg lighter than it should be. For example, you actually have a 6.05 gram part, but the scale reads it as 5.05 grams. Suppose this happens continuously, over and over again. You can easily see what can happen if the measurement system varies. The measurement system has to be a stable. This is the key. Only then can you begin to improve the measurement system. The stability is a measure of how the accuracy and precision of the system perform over time. So, how do we provide measurements that are reliable and meaningful? We rely on measurements to tell us when our process is operating correctly, when there is a problem, or when we have made an improvement. Measurement systems have to be reliable and dependable. Measurement system must be in a statistical control, and its stability is determined by control chart. To learn more about the control charts, I suggest you to watch this video. In this video, we discuss the X-bar chart, R chart, and IMR chart. This video helps you to practically understand the concept of keeping the process in control. So, the question here is that, do we know that whether our measurement system is reliable or not? Yes, we don't know. First, we need to prove it. Okay, to recap, before you can run any analysis of your measured data from measurement system, it must be stable. This means that your measurement system must be in statistical control. 
it must be consistent and predictable. The only way to know this is by monitoring the measurement system using a control chart. This is how the stability of measurement system is determined. The procedure for determining the stability of measurement system using control chart is given here. First, determine what the expected range of result is for a given measurement system. This is the range you would expect from the production samples over time. Step 2. Select a part from production that falls in the center of the expected range of the results and designate it as the master sample or golden sample or gauge block for the stability analysis. Step 3. The master sample is tested over and over on a regular basis. To answer how often should I measure, I would say depends on how often the measurement system is used. For example, if the measurement system is used on each shift, run the master sample once on each shift. If it is used daily, run the master sample each day. Step 4. The master sample results are plotted on an individual control chart over time. After about 20 or 25 samples have been taken, the control limits can be calculated. Step 5. Bring the measurement system into a statistical control by finding and eliminating special causes. The control chart on the master sample results is then interpreted for out of control situations, for example, points beyond the control limits. Any special causes indicated on the control chart need to be investigated. The root cause should be found and eliminated. Once there are no special causes, the measurement system is in a statistical control. You are ready to do further analysis on the measurement system. Here, the point outside of the control limit is interpreted as evidence that the process is out of control and investigation and corrective actions are required to find and eliminate the assignable cause or causes responsible for this behavior. As we discussed in control chart video, IMR charts are used to monitor the mean and variation of your process when you have continuous data that are individual observations, not in the subgroup. The detail of IMR chart concept and how to calculate the upper and the lower control limit is explained in that video. So we can use this IMR control chart to monitor process stability over time so that you can identify and correct instability in a process. For example, suppose as a quality engineer, you have to monitor the manufacture of liquid detergent and you want to assess whether the process is in control or not. You need to measure the pH of 25 consecutive batches of detergent. Since the data are not collected in subgroups, you should use an IMR chart to monitor the mean and variation of the detergent process pH. So you need to interpret the moving range chart, MR chart, first to examine the process variation. As we can see, none of the points are outside of the control limits, and the points display a random pattern. The points vary randomly around the center line and are within the control limits. There is no trend or patterns in this graph. How to do this in Minitab? Choose a stat and then control chart and then variable chart for individuals and select IMR. Then in the variable section, select pH. Then click on IMR options. Select one point more than K is on a deviation from center line. This is test one. And test two, which is K points in a row on the same side of the center line. As you can see, one observation failed test one on the eye chart, 
because the observation is more than three standard deviations above the center line. To ensure that your results are valid, the data should be continuous. The data should be in a time order because control charts detect changes over time. The order of data is important. You should enter the data in the order it was collected, with the oldest data at the top of the worksheet. The data should be collected at appropriate time intervals. Collect data at equally spaced time interval, such as every hour, every shift, or every day. Select a time interval that is short enough that you can identify changes to the process soon after the changes occur. The data should be individual observations that are not collected in subgroups. The data should include at least 100 total observations. If you have fewer than the recommended number of observations, then you can still use the control chart, but the results are preliminary because the control limits may not be precise. If you use the chart regularly, re-estimate the standard deviation and the control limits after you collect the recommended number of observations. The data should be moderately normal. If the data are very skewed, you could try transformation to see if that corrects the non-normal condition. If your process naturally produces non-normal data and the transformation is effective, you can use the chart of transform data to assess the stability of your process. All right. In this video, we covered the measurement system stability, the first part of these video series. We are going to release video series on different topics, including application of statistics in manufacturing and quality control, robotics and mechatronics, industrial machine vision, system dynamics, finite element analysis with abacus, GDNT and tolerance analysis, and many other interesting topics. Don't forget to subscribe to this YouTube channel to get notified when a new video on this topic is released.